Welcome to our personal home, which we have lovingly named the house on Honeysuckle Hill. Today, we're revealing our remodeled kitchen and dining room. We bought this home from a family who had lived here for nearly 60 years, and while it had been lovingly cared for and maintained, the finishes were nearly untouched. It's been our goal to maintain the character and integrity of this home while making layout updates and updating the finishes to reflect our personal style. From the moment we walked into this house, we knew that at some point the kitchen would need a major overhaul. It was a galley style kitchen, and despite there being a breakfast nook with large windows at the end, the layout made the space feel really dark and small. There was a decent amount of storage, but the counter space was really lacking. The kitchen had all stained wood cabinetry and sunshine yellow for mica countertops. We knew that by opening up the wall between the kitchen and formal dining room, we could create a large island in the center of the space. We went through many iterations of the plan to land on the most functional and beautiful layout possible, and after playing with countless layout options, we actually returned to the original one we came up with several years ago. We think the end result speaks for itself. The color palette of the kitchen was inspired by classic interiors, natural materials, and a desire to mix new and old. There is such a mixture of materials and colors throughout the space, all under the umbrella of a very neutral palette that we really hope will stand the test of time. The cabinets are Natural Cream by Benjamin Moore. I love this color because it has just the right amount of concentrated color to distinguish it from white cabinetry, but it still has a very neutral base. It's not too cool, not too warm. All of the wood accents throughout the kitchen are solid walnut. We knew we wanted a dark wood tone on the island to contrast with the light cabinets, and walnut felt like the perfect choice. We pulled in walnut accents throughout to make the whole room feel cohesive and balanced. And we added one more neutral material and the off-white plaster that surrounds the walnut in the range alcove. The creams, browns, blacks, and whites are mixed in different variations throughout the entire room and nearly every material so that it all feels cohesive but not monotonous. Let's talk for a minute about metal finishes and plumbing fixtures. We love mixing metals in this space. Here we did plumbing fixtures and polished nickel and all of the cabinet hardware and unlacquered brass. Mixing finishes in a space can really help create a sense of timelessness rather than picking one finish that obviously places the design in a certain time period. I love to pick metal finishes that have been used throughout history and I especially love living finishes and true solid metals like brass and nickel. Our kitchen bridge faucet and pot filler are from Duval Kitchens in England and the details really make them special. I love the porcelain touch with the hot and cold labels and the cross handles have a very historic feel. All of our hardware is unlacquered brass. Because there's no lacquer on the finish, it's susceptible to aging and patina, but that's what makes it so charming. As we use the kitchen, the brass will age. I love living finishes like brass and even marble because they show signs of life. As with any kitchen, the countertops are a big focus in the space. We decided to do a mix here as well, both in the type of stone and the edge profile. For the island, we went with a honed marble and an eased edge, just kind of a straight edge. We had some fun with the front of the sink by adding marble to the cabinetry to create an apron front. On the perimeter and the backsplash behind the range, we went with a black soapstone. I love the natural veining and a hint of green color running through the slab. There's just a depth to the color and a smoothness to the stone that has me falling in love with it more every time I use it. We went with an OG edge profile on the soapstone, which is a little curve, because I wanted to add a little bit of classic flair to this darker material. I didn't want it to feel stark and modern in the space, and the OG edge ensures that it still feels classic and timeless. We were able to incorporate some fun moments with our lighting as well. The pendants over the island really illuminate the workspace and provide a beautiful glow. These ceramic pendants are also from Duval Kitchens in England, and I love knowing that they were handcrafted by artisans at Coates Mill. They add so much charm to the space. We also added some accent lighting to the range alcove with the small flush mounts. The brass ties in with the cabinet hardware, and I turn them on constantly because they provide just the right light to work anytime I'm cooking. The island is such an important work zone in this kitchen. We centered it with the cast iron workstation sink and a bridge faucet. On one side, we have a set of dishwasher drawers and a pullout for cookie sheets. And on the other side is a trash pullout and open shelving, which is a really special moment. 
Our carpenter Kyle built this beautiful curved shelving which I designed to really feel like a piece of furniture and to allow for some well-styled display. On the perimeter of the kitchen, we have a full wall of cabinetry with an integrated fridge, and then we have the range alcove. The range alcove is probably my favorite part of the room. It creates such a beautiful centerpiece for the space and feels so comfortable for cooking. The lower storage has lots of deep drawers and pullouts for utensils and oils. The walnut shelving ties in the island, and then we added a natural patina to the rest of the range hood with a plaster finish. The main cabinetry wall has a pantry cabinet, integrated fridge, and then six feet of cabinets with storage below, standard uppers, and an appliance garage, which hides some of our most used small appliances and helps to keep the visual countertop space clear. On the remaining perimeter wall of the kitchen, I knew that I wanted to search for something with character rather than doing more built-in cabinetry here. Historically, kitchens were not filled with wall-to-wall -wall cabinetry. Freestanding furniture has traditionally been a very important part of kitchen storage and use, whether that was a china cabinet, a pie safe, a freestanding pantry cabinet, or a work table. This wall is really visible from the living room and I knew this was a chance to find something antique and one of a kind. We searched four months for the perfect piece and ended up stumbling across a kitchen cabinet from the late 19th century. I love the tone of the Irish pine. The size and style is just perfect for this perimeter wall. And fun fact, the storage on the bottom was actually designed to bring in chickens from the cold at night. Now let's move into the dining room. The dining room is an extension that was added to the house somewhere around the 1980s. We love all the windows and the natural light that floods the space. It was already an eat-in kitchen, but when we changed the layout and lost our formal dining room, this became the only dedicated dining space in the house, so we really wanted to make it special. We added a cased opening to what used to be completely open to create a sense of separation. Then our main focus was to infuse a little bit of color and personality into the room. The obvious star of the show in this room is the wallpaper and the trim paint combination. The wallpaper is a William Morris & Company design based on a pattern from the 1880s. I love the gray-green background color and the neutral browns and beiges in the floral pattern. It feels so historic and traditional while still being current. We picked the trim color based on the wallpaper, and this color is called Antique Pewter by Benjamin Moore. The table is a white oak drop leaf table from England in the early 1900s. It's solid white oak and the legs swing in and out on dowel hinges. I love that this table already has a long history and we get to add memories to it as our family gathers around the table. The chairs belong to my grandparents and we cleaned them up and recovered them in a dark performance fabric to make them really durable for our kids. The kitchen and dining spaces flow seamlessly with one another and also with the rest of the home, but they still feel just separated enough to feel like their own spaces. We love the functionality and beauty of these reimagined rooms. Mm -hmm.